Eleven months after the Battle of Yavin 4 and the destruction of the first Death Star, Darth Vader was in hot pursuit of the man that had fired the shot that destroyed the Empire's marvellous superweapon, and this pursuit became even more of a personal mission for the Sith Lord after he discovered that this man was his son, Luke Skywalker. Lord Vader believed that if he were to follow the trails of the old Jedi Order, he may be able to find his son, believing that without a teacher to guide him, all he would have was the relics of the past to learn from and that it would be the best opportunity to find him. On the planet Dantooine, an old Jedi enclave sat silent in the hills, its ruins almost unrecognisable from its grandeur of the past. The Jedi enclave had sat untouched for almost four millennia after it was destroyed by Darth Malak and left abandoned by the Jedi Order as a scar on their history. However, the ruins became legend amongst the Dantooine people who had been almost cut off from the galaxy. However, its importance and historical relevance hadn't been lost. The ruins to the Dantooine people were known simply as the Place of Fallen Rocks, and rumours circulated among the people that if one entered these ruins, they would never return being trapped there for the rest of eternity. Lord Vader caught wind of these rumours regarding the place of Fallen Rocks and learned of its historical relevance to the Jedi, and as such he travelled to Dantooine not only to learn the truth of this mysterious location, but also in the hope that he would find his son doing the same thing. The Sith Lord arrived on the planet and took a squad of stormtroopers and infiltrated the ancient ruins, discovering that there was a lot more going on than what could be seen on the surface and after scouring the labyrinthian-like structures beneath the desecrated ruins, known in history as the sublevels, to his bewilderment he discovered a mysterious facility barred by a door designed only to respond to the use of the force. Vader swirled some dark energy and obliterated the door using the force stepping into the entrance area. However, before Vader and the stormtroopers could enter, an assortment of blaster bolts were flung towards him and the squad. The Sith Lord promptly ignited his lightsaber, blocking the bolts one by one. However, the speed at which the bolts were arriving allowed a single one to get through his defences, and it pierced his armour, creating a small opening that exposed his flesh to the air of the urban world, causing slight damage to the suit that kept him alive. The wound itself was lightly dripping blood onto the floor, and as he looked back, he discovered his entire squad of stormtroopers had been killed by the mysterious blaster bolts. More bolts then began to fire mysteriously towards Vader from the walls, and using the force he crushed the mysterious attackers, and surveyed the small spaces within the walls from where steam and smoke was pouring out. Realising that the entrance to the facility had been booby-trapped, with small sentry turrets to deny anyone from entering. However, Vader was then called on his comlink, and left the facility to repair his armour vowing to return to discover what lay within. But as Lord Vader left, a number of droids within the facility became activated, assumingly woken by the commotion, and they took a sample of the blood that had spilled onto the floor from Darth Vader. And not only that, but during the fight a mysterious machine scanned the Sith Lord's mind, creating an imprint. With both the Sith Lord's DNA and mind on hand, believing that they were simply executing their programming, the droids created a clone to replicate the original. The reality was that the facility within the Jedi Temple was a cloning facility. However, the ancient Jedi techniques were not complete, and despite the process taking only a mere few days, the general technology was faulty, leaving the cloned Darth Vader delusional and damaged and the fact that this technology wasn't complete could be indeed why the Jedi never used it in the past. By the time the clone of Darth Vader was fully grown and built, the droids of the facility decided to create an almost perfect replica of the armour, despite the fact that the clone Vader did not require it like the original, and to do this they had taken scrap from the abandoned rebel base nearby, and although the visuals matched perfectly with the original, its functionality was almost non-existent. Additionally, to go along with his armour, the cloning droids created a replica lightsaber. However, this lightsaber was a mere imitation, unable to produce a true blade of energy that could be used as a weapon, instead creating a fake crimson blade that would simply pass through any objects that it touched. 
One thing that it did share with the true version of Vader, however, was its innate ability to use the dark side of the Force, and the dark menacing personality of the Sith Lord that he was impersonating. The cloned Darth Vader then took over the ancient cloning facility and created a small army of clones that replicated the young explorers Tash and Zacharanda, and tried to escape the confines of Dantooine intent on using the cloning facility and the machines in the Dantooine Jedi Enclave to create a true army that he could lead. However, after capturing the real Tash and Zack, unbeknownst to him or anyone, a small contingent of the Galactic Empire had arrived on Dantooine. It was the real Darth Vader, who had returned to discover the mysteries of the facility. However, as he entered the ship where in which they were being held captive, and the clone Darth Vader was enacting his plans, he was surprised to discover the clone of himself standing so proudly, claiming its validity in the galaxy as Darth Vader. The clone and the true version of Darth Vader then engaged each other, not initially with a lightsaber, but with the Force. The two Vaders flung containers and any movable object that surrounded them at one another, but after several minutes of doing this to no avail, they both ignited their lightsabers preparing for the fatal duel. However, the duel was only fatal for one, as the true Darth Vader using the Force placed the clone into an undefendable position and sliced clean through, killing it almost instantly. Despite Tash and Zack managing to escape his grasp, Vader spent the next several days scouring the Jedi Enclave and the cloning facility within. He realised exactly what it was, deducing that this facility was not new, it had not been placed there after its destruction, that the facility was in fact created by the ancient Jedi Order of the Past, and led by the very Jedi who run the Dantooine Enclave, who were dabbling into the concept of cloning. However, the mysteries of the past were not on Darth Vader's agenda, and he left the Dantooine Jedi Enclave behind, with his only intent to further pursue and finally find Luke Skywalker. It's really interesting to know that the Jedi Enclave that we see in this story popped up many, many, many years before Knights of the Old Republic even came out. This story was in the book Galaxy of Fear Clones, released in 1998, and it kind of surprised me that both Knights of the Old Republic games didn't sort of integrate this cloning facility in any kind of way. So it's kind of funny to try and put the dots together and try to realise what were these Jedi trying to do? They had this ancient facility that was capable of replicating Force users, and we can see that in the book because the clone is able to contend with Darth Vader in terms of his Force powers. So you could possibly deduce that maybe these Jedi were trying to perhaps clone Revan? Perhaps one could even assume that maybe the Revan we play as in Knights of the Old Republic isn't even Revan at all, but just a clone created by the Jedi. Who knows? Obviously, you know, that's not true, but it's fun to think of the potential things that could happen. Additionally, for anybody that might want to know, the two young Jedi that appear in this book, Zack and Tasharanda, are actually coming to Star Wars canon very soon, and they're getting their own comic book later this year. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more Star Wars and Knights of the Old Republic content from me. Also, don't forget to come and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join the Discord server because I would love to have you there. And if you'd like to support the channel a little bit further, perhaps consider taking a look at Patreon. All links are in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.